Hey guys, Xcarquan here, and well, it's Friday, and that normally means a, a Vrains review, but lo and behold, there wasn't an episode of Vrains this week. Don't know why, I didn't look into it, but I went on Crunchyroll on fucking Wednesday, and it was no event, no, no, no Vrains. And then I found out the next episode of Vrains won't be on until the 5th, which is next Wednesday. But is that going to stop me from making a video for you guys? <laughs> yes, yes it will. Only joking, it's good for morale, you know. Uh, no, actually, I thought for today I'd do something a bit different. So a little different, a little discussion video, if you will. Uh, because I can't talk about friends. If you guys like it, maybe I'll make it a thing. Maybe I'll make it its own show. We can talk more about it. It's obviously you know, themed, as the title explains. Uh, but yeah, I thought I'd try something a bit different. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, because here's the thing. I love... Yu-Gi-Oh characters. I think Yu-Gi-Oh, the strength of the Yu-Gi-Oh show is it has some great characters, very memorable characters, especially the rival characters. I think in many ways the rival characters in, in all the Yu-Gi-Oh shows actually seem to be more explored and actually have more depth to them than the than the protagonist ever does. But the protagonist always seems two-dimensional by comparison. I'm not saying they're bad character designs, you know, some of them can be. I'm not saying they're all bad designs, but no matter for however good the protagonist of a Yu-Gi-Oh show is, the rival character just seems to be a bit a bit deeper of a character, a bit more relatable. So I wanted to talk about certain rival characters that I happen to have the decks for. That's right. Right? Because what I'm going to be talking about today is how their decks would work in real life because I happen to have um, a lot of the rival decks in real person, in real, you know, I have the cards all here and I've made, um, my friends and I over on Team X-Force, we, we like to make character decks based on certain rules and they all have sort of the protagonist decks, but I've kind of specialised in the uh, in the antagonist deck, the rival decks. My my decks, I've got Kyber, Jack Atlas, Kite, uh, Declan, and um, oh fucking hell, Chaz. I've got Chaz Princeton's deck as well. I've also got Zane Truesdale's deck because he's kind of a rival, but not as much as Chaz. So I consider Chaz like Jaden's proper rival in, in that show. So what I've done is today I want to talk about the first uh, the first rival character in Yu-Gi-Oh, Seto Kaiba. I want to talk about why his deck the way it is the way it is, why he uses the cards he does, what those cards might represent, and um, roughly how a deck like his would work in real time, you know, with the real rules. Because obviously in the anime they change a lot of the rules, they use cards incorrectly, oh man. Um, so I want to, I've laid all the cards out here and I kind of want to show you today what I think is the reason Kaiba has his cards, what they mean to him, what they could represent, and how they fare in the actual trading card game. And then once I've compiled all that, uh, if you guys like this show, and I, I can do the, I can do for other characters uh, that I may have, um, you know, we can see where it goes. Uh, later on, I have also been thinking of later on down the line of even doing a what if scenario of certain characters, like if their real life decks came in contact and had a duel with each other, whose deck is superior? But that's something I need to, I think I should cover for a later date. Now, to probably point out, guys, for this uh, video, I can only use, I only have access to cards that are released, and I am going to be talking about them as their real effects. So, for example, I have Card of Amaze, that has its, that has its legit effect, not its Kai, but not its anime effect, and we'll be talking about that at some point uh, in, in, in today's episode. Episode. But I can only have the cards that are currently available to me. I am working hard to try and get cards for other characters and try and make these character decks uh, more of a thing. But until then, I've got what I've worked with. And I wanted to start with Kyber because Kyber, the Kyber deck is probably one of my best decks, one of my favourite decks. And it's just blinged out. And I've not only got the Kyber deck here, I've also got a huge bulky extra deck of Kyber stuff as well, which I like to swap out. But for now, I've kind of gone with what I've gone for. So let's check it out. So as you can see, this is my deck. I've laid it all out nice for you. Sorry for the sort of guerrilla style tactics. I'm not normally, this is something I've worked out properly. I'm sort of got the camera. But this is essentially the deck. You'll notice it's, it's a lot of the 
recent movie pack stuff and the recent movie Dark Side Dimensions, so I've uh, based a lot of the strategies on that. I understand there's a, this deck will not have every single Kyber card for for obvious reasons, but we do have, you know, several other cards here, and this is essentially the deck as it is a whole, so I'm just going to take a little stop there. You can have a little screenshot of that and you can get some ideas. And let's talk about this deck. So naturally, the cards I want to talk about first, the first cards we've got to cover is, of course, the Blue Eyes White Dragons. Look at them. They're Kyber's ace monsters. They are feared within the world of Yu-Gi-Oh. The minute Kyber gets one of these bad boys out, shit is about to go down. Uh, I happen to have, um, I'm going to get a good close of these. These are my uh, secret rare, uh, uh, secret rare DDoS001 print of the cards. Uh, they are from, I can't remember which, which game, but they're really hard to come by. And these guys are probably the most valuable uh, cards I have. They uh, are, a, are a collective price of about £300. It's about, you know, you're looking at about a 90 odd quid per card. Uh, they're very hard to come by and they're really, they're, you know, they don't even do this art style because sort of to do with um, a disagreement with the artist and they just they don't really do this art style anymore. That's why future Blue Eyes that come out, it's all different art styles. You will not see this art style unless it comes to some arrangement as far as I know. But this and the original Dark Magician art, you just don't see them anymore. It's got to be other art styles. But this, I truly think, this Kyber, Kyber is obsessed with the Blue Eyes White Dragon because he feels it's kind of a kinship to his soul. The Blue Eyes Red Dragon is the ultimate card. Like, in the anime, even if, like, in, like, Zexal, if a Blue Eyes White Dragon came out, everyone was like, holy shit, that's a legendary Blue Eyes White Dragon. Even though it's just a level 8 monster, fucking 3,000 attack, it's still considered one of the strongest, most powerful, and also the rarest cards in, in the world. In the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, of course, there's only, well, there's only three in existence. There were four until Kyber got rid of it, because it's just another example of Kyber. Well, Kyber was a bit of a dick at that point, but it's the point of Kyber saying no, I am the only one worthy of this power because to kind of the blue eyes represented uh, a sort of divine power, a divinity, if you will. This is true strength. This is the ultimate power. And to and Kaiba, from his humble beginnings to rise up, he thinks, he's sort of like, I see myself as the blue eyes. And that's why, and I think that's why he's so obsessed with the blue eyes. Not just because it's a case of, oh, you know, I'm woke up, I wanted him to have it, and he's just always had a thing for dragons. I think because in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh that Kaiba lives in, these are the ultimate dragons. This is the height of power. These Having these cards in your deck makes you arguably one of the strongest duelists in the world. And Kaiba's like, I have to have these cards because I have to prove I am the strongest. So I need not just one, I need all three and I need to tame these beasts to show that I am the strongest. Which he did, of course, in the form of the Blue-Eyes Ultimate Dragon, which is the first fusion, the first big ass fusion that Kyber dropped on us back at Duelist Kingdom when he summoned this fucking bad boy. Of course, if you look throughout all the, you know, you probably saw all the additional stuff I've put in. You've got Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon, that kind of works the same. Blue Eyes Shining, Blue Eyes Chaos Max, Deep Eyes White Dragon. Of course, Obelisk the Tormentor. Again, Obelisk the Tormentor, the same as Blue Eyes, is pure power. Not just any Egyptian god. I think Kyber wouldn't have, wouldn't have suited the playstyle of Slifer or the, or the playstyle of Ra. Obelisk is that brute power because that was Kyber's technique. You know, when Kyber was taking over his father's company, he was ruthless. He was aggressive. The way he manipulated the situation, but overall just took over by brute force, by buying up these companies and just being totally relentless. Obelisk the Tormentor, you know what I mean? It's up, that's definitely the, the, the symbolism behind these powerful cards. And you can argue that for most of Kyber's deck. I mean, look at some of these cards. Look at, he uses beat sticks because, again, it's all about power to Kyber. It's all about power. And, you know, he thinks, you know, that is, that to me is, you know, what Kyber is about. He's all about over, he overpowers his opponents. He throws out beat sticks. Blue Eyes is obviously his main card. Then we've got um, another another strategy Kyber does, does employ, which is more a strategic option, is making sure he always has cards on the field, swarming special summonings. We have cards like Cyberjar. Yes, this deck is traditional because that's in the show they're pretty much traditional. So yeah, Cyberjar gets destroyed, wipes out his opponent. 
he could swarm the field with whatever cards he happens to draw. This ancient lamp, again, another, I'm gonna just close that in, because this isn't the fucking ultra rare, my friends. This is the secret rare, Retro Pack 1. Retro Pack 1, um, secret rare, ancient lamp, which values at about 140 pound. In terms of singular individual price, this is probably the most expensive, most valuable card I have. And I have my very good friend Robert Jones to thank for that. Um, because he went and got it for me and, and I, you know, he gave me a ridiculously good price for it. Like, it, it was sort of tra part trade, part cash kind of deal. But still, the end result was me paying much less for this incredibly rare card. It's a great card because he flips it up. You know, you take it face down, you've got two ones, and you flip it back, you can re ricochet that attack back. And while it's face up, you can special summon, oh look, another beat stick, Le Jin, 1800 attack, special summon that, get out your blue eyes, you're laughing. Kyber's all about strategy, having everything in the right place at the right time. He's not an idiot, he knows what he's doing, which is why I think he uses cards like the Giant Germs. Again, Kyber, he sort of infect. he became this kind of a virus. He infected um, Kyber Corporation. You know, he weaved his way in, bought the companies, bought the, the smaller companies, took over, gradually took over. Um, but then when, he, when it was time for him to do the big power move, he did the big power move. And of course, this is great for getting blue eyes out. Destroy one, you get two out. Instant should be for blue eyes, which I have done on many occasions. Another card I want to point out, I want to, I want to talk about in the monster section, then we'll move on to some of the spells, is the clowns. Now, I know we're going to make the jokes. I know the jokes are coming. Oh, he has a clown fetish. Uh -huh. But Kyber has only ever used two clowns. Saggy the Dark Clown, which I haven't got in this deck because it's not really super for the strategies I'm working on, but a staple for this day, he also uses Petin the Dark Clown. Now, Petin's a great card. Everyone, you talk to you about Petin, fuck off, because Petin is a fantastic card. Destroy it, even if you destroy a battle by card effect. There are certain card effects that don't apply because it's too quick, but card effects and stuff, you destroy it, you, you, you banish one, you get another one out. It's all about keeping the field full of monsters. And I also think there's a reason Kaibu has this thing for clowns. I, I really do. It's like clowns, dragons, and viruses, infections, giant germ, crush card virus, um, fucking uh, total uh, deck devastation virus, etc. Kaibu's all about sort of, you know, when he went and hacked in uh, Pegasus computer, viruses, he laid it all out, you know, he's, he's a, a computer genius. I think his love for clowns is more of a, a sort of a, a fly back to childhood. I think Kyber, I think the clowns, both Saggy and Petty, kind of represent that more, that former innocence of Kyber. You know, that former child in Kyber who didn't really get to have a childhood and, you know, kids, he either hates clowns and thinks creepy clown, you know, creepy clowns are a representative of his childhood, or the clowns are like the last sort of reminder of a childhood that he never got to have. This is why I think he was so obsessed with a theme park. You know, he does all these things that's great for the kids, you know, because he's he he wants to he it's it's reminding him of a childhood that he doesn't get to have. And I think that's just a very interesting uh an interesting dynamic of Kaiba that he uses. They, they keep using clowns. I thought there might have been a new clown come for the movie, the Dark Side of the Mansions. Sadly, there wasn't. I would have loved a, like a, a powered up pet, a powered up Saggy the Dark Clown. That would have been awesome. Now, let's jump onto some spell cards for a second here. Now, most of Kyber, no, most of the Kyber cards that he uses, spells and traps, are just sort of your, your staples and just certain cards like Pot of Green and all that. They're all there to do their job. But there are some that I think also scream to Kyber's personality and how he is and this the prime example fucking shrink i love this card it's a fantastic card basically if your opponent you, it's a quick play spell you can choose one monster on the field and you can half it and i think this represents kyber's personality in an amazing way because how much how many times do you see kyber shoot someone down to the side to, to feeling like they're this tall. How often do you see Kaiba just give people shit because they're not they're not quite up to his level or they're just not quite up to speed? Kaiba has pretty much no respect for anyone and literally talks down to just about every person he sees. He shrinks them down to a level that he thinks they're deserving to be at. 
And if you want to go back to that whole, if, and if you're still not that convinced about my talk about Kaiba using clowns to sort of remind him of his innocence, what about enemy controller? A game controller. This is a guy, again, who knew nothing of a childhood, raised in an orphanage, was forced was when he was adopted by a, 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 a tyrannical businessman was forced to you know undergo a r rigorous sort of regime of training and studying you know a reminder maybe of the life he never had it also obviously is a great card because in the anime he used to take control of Yuka's card, which he then tributes. It has a similar effect in, in real life, but you have to tribute one of your monsters, so it's kind of a one for one. But it can be very useful if you play that accurately. Um, very good quick play spell, actually. Very good indeed. Now let's talk about Negate Attack. Now in the anime, it's a, it's a magic card, but then becomes a, a trap card. And uh, in the real game, it's a counter trap card. It's a very good counter trap card because it doesn't it doesn't change things. It doesn't it doesn't change the field. It doesn't kill all the monsters. It just ends the battle phase. Like oh right, puts you straight into main phase two. Interesting choice that Kaiba would go for this card and not a card like say Mirror Force, like Yugi uses. And I think there's a reason for that, because not a lot of Kaiba's cards um, deal in um, mass destruction like that. It's a very bizarre idea when you think about it. Um, I mean, there, there are cards that power up and, and lower the attack of his monsters, or uh, lower, the attack of, lower the attack of their monsters, or increase the attack of his own monsters. But he has very few cards, at least none that come into my mind immediately, that um, directly, like, destroy... Um, cards by battle like he has obviously alternative blue eyes by dragon which has the effect to destroy a card per turn but i mean as far as spells and traps goes i can't think of anything that um right now top of my head nothing is coming to mind of a card that immediately destroys stuff deck devastation virus weeds its way through your deck and sort of takes out and, and, and eliminates stuff and destroys stuff granted that goes but that's going back to kaiba's love of you know of computer viruses and uh, back to his personality about he has that he of, of his business strategy about being somewhat of a virus but he doesn't have mirror force when he could easily get a mirror force this is he's kaiba he could get a mirror force and I then I realized, okay, he doesn't use Mirror Force, he doesn't use cards like Sakura Suama, he doesn't use stuff like that. He he stops the attacks, but not he doesn't destroy the monsters. Almost he he sees the the joy or the honor or whatever, but I feel like Kaiba does this because he wants the joy of destroying that monster. I think that's the reason he might use a card like cloning. Like, can you imagine it? Summoning your best card and then boom, Kaiba's got a card just like it. That, to me, is another prime example of Kaiba. It's like, you know, no matter what you've got, oh, I summon Dark Magician, yeah? I play cloning, which also gives me a Dark Magician. Kaiba, in a nutshell, uh, you know, he wants to prove that he is better, just as good, if not better than you at everything. So what, if you summon your ace monster, he's going to summon a fucking clone of it. You know, and then he's going to destroy it. That's the best strategy of cloning. Summon that in attack mode, attack them both, s suicide them. Because once once the original leaves the field, your clone, your clone token leaves the field. So you may as well suicide it, because you're not even going to lose. You're not even going to, you gain a monster with equal attack and you get to take out. It's a free takeout. But again, why have that when you can easily have something like Sakuretsu armor? And I think it's because Kaiba revels in the in the fight. He revels in taking out his opponent. Like he took out Gozaburo by his own hand, by his own strategies. Like he did all that. He like he, he he implements it in a duel. He doesn't like to just mirror force everything out of the way. He'll say, negate attack, so your battle phase is over, but all those monsters are still there for me to destroy. Because now I'm gonna play my blue eyes and fucking wipe them all out. Another prime example of just Kaiba being Kaiba. He, his whole personality is reflected throughout the duel. One last point you guys are probably thinking, X, X, why you got Blue Eyes Shining Dragon in this deck? Why have you got Blue Eyes Shining Dragon in this deck? It's so hard to summon. A lot of my think is hard to summon, but go over to Team X Force and watch some of those uh, character duels and you'll find that this is not actually that hard to summon. Not for me, not for this deck. I summon this this card so often with this deck it's untrue. And the addition of the new blue eye stuff from Dark Side Dimensions has just blown it all up. 
Guys, overall, I think not only does Kaiba's uh, personality really come out through his deck and through his playstyle, I think in a real world application with the real cards, his deck is actually quite effective. I once went up against one of our one of my friends who was who is a ranked duelist, a ranked duelist in this country. I don't know where he's ranked. He's not like super high up. I think he's like top 40 I think top 40 and he was using one of the top tier decks at the time which was a Shadol deck and I was playing with this deck I was playing with my Kyber deck sure enough I got and I shit you not I got out the blue eyes shining dragon I got it out and I said I summon blue eyes shining dragon and all of his all of the competitive players who play who who will also come to this club for a few games but they also went to the tournaments I remember they look them looking over and going you summon blue eyes shining dragon and I went yeah, and they were just blown away. And guess what? I ended up winning that duel because my friend could not destroy this blue eyes shining dragon. None of his Shadow's effects would work. Everything went wrong for him and I, I actually ended up winning that duel. So, real world applications. And as I should point out, in that duel, I was running the deck in an advanced format, not the traditional format. So, it was a totally legal deck as well. But kind of, overall, kind of placed out plays out as it you know his personality comes out through his deck through the cards he picks and you can you know you can just tell the, the kind of person he is just by looking at this wide variety of cards um and overall i think i i think it's my favorite deck it's the deck i put the most work into um and i want to say right now i think it's the strongest deck but i haven't really put it up against other decks before i haven't really sat down and gone right who would win in a fight, Kyber or Jack Atlas? Now, I mean, I've dueled the decks against you, but I've never really thought about it properly. So maybe one day I will, maybe I will in the future one day. Who knows? Who knows? So that was me just yammering on about Kyber's deck and the real world equivalent of it, which is right here next to me. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you have any other points that you like to that you like to mention about Kyber's deck? Any particular cards that you think express Kyber as an individual or other cards that just sort of work for the way the way they do for Kyber. I don't know. Whatever you think, check out the comments below. Uh, and if you did like this video, let me know because I I will actually carry it on. I I won't put it in this slot. I'll, I'll find a new slot for it throughout the week. But if you like it, I I don't see any reason why I can't carry it on to event which would eventually work into dual scenarios. A what if, if you will, who would win if such and such dueled such and such. I like doing discussion videos like that. So if you guys enjoy it, if you guys want to talk more about it, leave a comment in the description below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you like this video, I hope you did. If not, uh, well, we'll just have to wait and see. And if you didn't, well, next week I'll be doing Vrains again. So until next time, have a good day, and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.